Well, hello, and welcome back to another episode of our Accelerated ID series. My name is Shantae Skildegger, and I will be your host for today. So we're going to go ahead and get started with AI and instructional design, but I have some disclaimers before we get started. I am by no means an expert in AI when it comes to instructional design. Just like everyone here that is watching and will watch on the replay, AI is new to me, but I feel like AI is everywhere. Everywhere I turn, there are conversations about AI, and I feel like we all have to be in the know and growing and developing ourselves when it comes to AI, right? I remember when computers first came out like in mainstream and that tells some of you how old I actually am. So I remember, you know, there were many people who were like, oh, I'm not going to learn how to use computers. And they made it through their life without using computers up until a certain point. But now everything uses a computer, right? Even when you go to Walmart, you are using a computer for self-checkout. If you want to follow a map to get somewhere, you're either using the computer in your car or the computer on your phone to help you navigate where you are. So while some people, you know, turn their cheek to computers, that's just the reality of where we are. Computers are here. Computers are everywhere. They're all around us in our life. You could, I don't even know how many different types of computer systems we might have in our daily lives. But I feel like we all have to embrace AI. So I am not an expert. I am just a lifelong learner who is sharing what I know with you about artificial intelligence and how I am seeing it show up in instructional design so far. Now, I say so far, because by the end of this month or the end of this summer, anything that I'm sharing with you right now might be different because as Roberta said, it's taking over. It's everywhere. Everybody is introducing new ways of bringing AI into their software. They're doing updates. Like one of my favorite tools is constantly iterating and developing more features, which is awesome. But it just means that we constantly have to be in a growth stage in order to keep up with what these changes are. So a little bit of a level setting, just in case AI is brand new to people here. AI stands for artificial intelligence. And when we're talking about AI, we are talking about machines that think like humans to produce large amounts of information very fast. So that can help us in many ways. So before we dive into our content, I think it's important for us to get grounded in the idea that AI has been around for a while. It's really dominating conversation since chat GPT really became popular, but it's not new. It's been here for a while. Siri is a great example of artificial intelligence. Alexa, right? And then even if you think about like your Spotify, or your Netflix, or your Amazon, right? They're all using artificial intelligence to figure out what your preferences are. And then they put in front of you things that they think you might like. They give you recommendations. So those are all artificial intelligence backed, right? Or think about on your cell phone. What do you do so many times a day on your cell phone? You send messages or you send emails. Well, there's an AI assist that sometimes will help us finish out a sentence, right? So that's also AI. Or maybe whenever you're using your Google Maps or your Apple Maps, maybe you're like driving down the road and then you get a notification of an alternate route. There is AI in there that's saying, oh, there is congestion ahead. Let me provide an alternate route. So we're using AI a lot without even realizing what kind of AI we are using. Think about autonomous cars like Tesla that have that self-driving component. We see AI there too. So AI is not new. It's been around, but now it's like really showing up because now it's impacting our work. So that's really what we're going to be focusing on today. Let's do a quick review of what some of the benefits of using AI are for us in the workplace. So as instructional designers, we can use AI to help validate our ideas or to help expand our knowledge and our thinking about a topic. 
So we can use it to do research, right? Maybe I don't know about a particular topic. I'm trying to think of, uh, there's a lot of topics I don't know. Maybe I want to look up Leonardo da Vinci, for example. And I want to learn about like, what were some of his best pieces of work? So I could pop into, into AI, chat GPT, and I could ask some questions to figure that out, right? So that helps expand my knowledge in my thinking. The part that we're all here and excited about is how can it help accelerate our productivity and our efficiency? And the last thing here is that it can help us generate solutions. So maybe we have a problem and we present that problem and we ask for possible solutions. And then we've got solutions to explore and brainstorm with our teams, right? So there's lots of ways for us to use AI and benefit from it. Now, there are many more, but we can't cover everything. So we're just going to cover the things that we can in this amount of time. So now that we've talked a little bit about what the benefits of AI are, some of the ways that it's present in our workplace or in our work. So what I want to do today is let's talk about AI and Addy, right? So jokingly, I'm like, hey, Addy, meet my AI friends. And the reason for that is that I want to take you through how we can use different AI tools to help support some of our common instructional design tasks for each of the different phases of Addy. So before we do that, because I know that we have a mixture of different experience levels here, we've got brand new people in instructional design, people who are considering make a transition out of one career into a career of instructional design. I know that we have some people that are like, I'm just here to learn what instructional design is and to see if that might be a potential career choice for me. So let's just do a quick hit, a quick run through of what Addy is. So Addy is a systematic process often used by instructional designers that help them take a, an idea for a learning solution all the way from the analysis phase to done, implemented, and evaluate. So Addy is an acronym that stands for Analysis, Design, Develop, Implement, and Evaluate. So we have whole trainings around Addy, so we're not going to get really too deep into this, but I'm about to walk you through some of the common tasks that we perform in each of these phases. But I did think it was important just to do a quick introduction of what Addy means. So for my newbies, the people that are just here exploring, Addy is just a model that we follow to help us build learning solutions. So we start with a quick analysis, then we design what we think that learning experience is, then we develop it, which means we build it, implement it, means we put it out into the world for people to consume that learning experience. And then we come back and we evaluate it, which means that we just, we evaluate how well it's performing, right? So that's a very, very high level explanation of what Addy is. But what might be more helpful to you and everyone here is for us to take a look at some of those common instructional designer tasks by phase. This is by no means an exhaustive list, but this is enough of our core tasks to really help us wrap our heads around how AI might help us, okay? So in analysis, we've got to research our topic. We often have a kickoff meeting or a scoping meeting. We conduct needs analysis. We write objectives. We meet with SMEs. We create project briefs and project plans. So those are some of our common tasks. Again, this is not an exhaustive list that has everything that we do. In design, we might outline or create a blueprint or we might storyboard we might think of, oh, what would be a good image for this whenever we go to build this? What would be a good activity for us to do? Then in develop, that's where we actually build the thing, whether it is e-learning with Storyline 360 or Rise or Slides or creating a video, right? So we actually create, create a workbook, a leave behind, a one pager, whatever that is. Then we move on to implement. That means we're done and we're putting it out into the world. So a facilitator might pick it up and facilitate it. We as instructional designers or LMS administrator might take it and upload it to a learning management system. We might be responsible for writing a description to put in the learning management system or for an email or a newsletter to promote that new course that we just worked on or maybe make an announcement to our leadership team, right? So these are just some of the things that we do in implement. And then that last phase, this is where we really, oh, get a sense of like, how did we do? Is this performing well? Do we need to make modifications? 
How well are our learners enjoying it? Are they showing behavior change? How well are they performing on their assessments, right? So this really just gets into our evaluation phase. So here we might build surveys and collect data from our participants, our learners, even our facilitators. Maybe we look at completion data, how many people are taking the this course in the learning management system or live in a workshop format. And then maybe we look at our quiz data to see how the quiz overall people are performing and then by question. So that's a very quick run through of different tasks. And I did that real fast because now I want to talk about tools because this is the most important part of why we are here. This past weekend, I went to a chat GPT for L&D professionals training that was hosted by Josh Cavalier. It's online. You can go to joshcavalier.com and he offers this training. He offers a membership. But he said something really interesting in his session on Saturday. He said he likes to think of AI as human, then AI, and then human. And what that means to me is, as a human, I have ideas or I create assignments for people to go out and build some kind of learning solution. Then we use AI tools. We leverage AI tools. But AI tools are not the end-all, be-all, right? So it's like we sandwich AI, human, AI, and then it's human again. So we never just stop at AI and go, oh, that's done. You know, as a human, I still have a role with however I am leveraging that AI tool. So I thought that that was just really important to share. And then one more thing that I want to share before you go into these tools, because I want to make sure that you are grounded in your thinking about how you can use AI before we start talking about things. Because as I introduce tools to you, you're going to be like, oh, wow. I could do that or I could do that. But I want you to know that there was a court ruling a couple of weeks back that said any content you create using generative AI, you do not have the copyright on. So you have to be very careful about how you use AI tools and always check the security and check who has ownership of those things. Okay. So that becomes like one of my validating factors before I opt into an AI tool now. So now we're going to go into the phases and we're going to talk about tools. So we talked about analysis and we have this list of activities that we commonly do as instructional designers in this analysis phase. So some of our possible AI tools that we can leverage. So if I am doing research, if I am conducting a needs analysis, if I am writing objectives and outcomes or preparing for a subject matter expert, or if I need to prepare a project brief about my project, I can leverage ChatGPT. ChatGPT is a really great resource. But remember, I've got to be careful about what I put into ChatGPT because that's generative AI. So I don't own the content on what is produced. So there's that slippery slope there. But I also want to tell you about Fireflies. Fireflies is a new tool that was introduced to me probably about three or four weeks ago by a vendor that I was hiring to build out our new learning management system. So Fireflies is this tool that just you set it up and it shows up in your different online meetings, your Zooms and things like that. And it takes notes about that meeting and it will document calls to action and it will summarize themes that were brought up. And if there were any links shared in the chat, it captures those so that you can really easily prepare something out of coming out of that. So the reason that I share that here is that if you have a scoping meeting and a kickoff meeting, it'd be great to invite this Fireflies AI in to capture notes for you so you don't have to worry about missing anything. You can also use those notes to help you create that project plan and to prepare that project brief. Or if you conduct subject matter expert interviews, Fireflies can catch all the notes so you don't miss anything. So these are two really cool tools that you can bring into your analysis phase to help you complete some of these tasks. But again, as Josh Cavalier mentioned, it's human, AI, and human. So these tools are never the end, the end game, right? They are just like our kindling to start a fire. So I just want you to think about it that way. All right, so moving on to design. I feel like there are a lot of tools out there potentially for us 
in the analysis phase and the design phase. And again, remember, I'm not an expert in AI tools. I am still learning. So you may have other tools here that you would want to add to this list. So in our design areas, we might create outline, blueprints, storyboards, image ideas, activities, and scripting. All of these are things that can be supported by ChatGPT. So you can leverage ChatGPT. There are some really great prompts out there that will help you produce a storyboard that has a slide suggestion, a title, an image suggestion, a highlight or text for on screen. I did that this weekend. So I built this prompt using a prompt that I got from Josh Cavalier's class and it built this really amazing storyboard. I was just like blown away. Now I had to use ChatGPT4 because ChatGPT3 did not give the same quality in the answer, but it was very helpful. Canva can also be another good resource for us. So Canva has an AI component as well. So there is Magic Image, which will help you generate ideas for images. There's a document component where you feed it some information and it can help craft content for you. So these are two possible tools that you can use. Canva keeps surprising me, by the way. I have been using Canva like one way for so many years. It's just like all of a sudden recently I've realized, wow, there's so much more to Canva. I've been missing this. And now to like see it come into the space with AI, we're going to talk about it and develop too. But there are some AI components that while they're still new, they're not fully built out in a way that I can use consistently. But that technology is coming. So I love that Canva is creating that. Then when we get into develop, now there are some great tools for slides and video creation. I haven't seen much in the way of our e-learning builds, but I have to believe that that is coming. As instructional designers, we create workbooks, we create slides, we create facilitator guides, videos, closed captions, and e-learning. So some possible AI tools that we can leverage, again, Canva. Canva has the magic designs. You give it a couple of sentences and it will actually create a slide template for you based on the information you fed it. Pictory is a really cool tool and there's free trials to Pictory if you want to go check this out. There's also free trial to Descript. So go check these things out. Pictory, you can put in an article, you can put in images, you can put in a script. It will take your script and create a video. It will take your images and create a video. It will take your article and it will create a video. All that you can then customize if there's any component of that that you don't like. So if you have to create something on handling difficult customers in the workplace, you can give it a script and it will create a video for you that you can then come into Picturey and modify. Script. This is my all-time favorite tool right now for video. I'm having so much fun with this tool. So whenever I take a video, I could put it in and it will give me a transcript. I can edit just by the text editor. So if there's a part of the video that I don't like, I can just highlight that paragraph and boom, it's gone. Or if I want to replace images, I can upload new images or pull from their image library. I can bring in video blocks, which are like little videos that play and put text over it. So it's really cool. I can download SRT files that I can then use for closed captioning in my learning management system. So that is a really awesome tool. Another really awesome tool that we are using right now is Well Said Labs. One of our clients has asked us to create a series of videos, but their budget is not super, super big. So we suggested AI. So with Well Said Labs, you give it a script and that generates a voiceover. Then we sync everything up with our video, but it is just amazing how good the quality of these AI voices are. Really incredible. Murph is another AI voice generator, which is also cool. It's one that we're just starting to explore. It has languages. So if you need something in Arabic or you need something in Spanish, again, you can work with the script and it will produce that. So that's really cool. And then Timmy, I've been using for a long time. 
which is you could drop your video in and it would create a transcript of that video and it would create the SRT files that I could then use for closed captioning. I haven't been using Timmy as much since I now have Descript, so I'm just largely using Descript to produce all of my transcripts. Because while I've always loved Timmy, Descript was actually doing a, a better job for me here recently. Let me go on to implement. So in the implement stage, we can again use ChatGPT. So as a facilitator, I can ask ChatGPT for some, hey, you know, I need some ideas about how I might engage a group of senior data analysts for this training that I'm about to do. Or I could use it to help me write a description or marketing copy or an email announcement. Again, that generative AI. So it's super helpful. LMS upload. So while I don't have a, an AI that will do the upload, what I can tell you is that some LMSs now, once you upload content, especially video content, there is an AI assist function that will write a summary of what that is for you. Or it will create a transcript automatically, just like whenever you upload a video to YouTube, how it will just create those closed caption, closed captions or subtitles. There are some LMS systems that are doing that as well. And what I really love about it is that it's indexing information, which means that you can search for keywords. So my brand new learning management system that I will be launching in August for my students in my accelerator program, our ID certificate program, that learning management system has these features. So if somebody types in analysis, it will go and it will check the entire course and pull up every video or every area that analysis is mentioned so that somebody can go and find the video that they want to review again. So I think that's really cool. All right, so then Jasper. Jasper is a brand new tool to me, which is very cool. It will generate email copy. It will create marketing copy. It creates blog copy. It can write a lesson, not like the same as an instructional designer would. But again, remember it's human, AI, human. So you can give it a topic and it could create some information for you, like for your research that you can then use to craft into a lesson. So it's really cool because whenever you're working with Jasper, you can select like, oh, I want a blog. I want email or a description. I want a listicle, right? Where you create that little list. You can select like three or four things or five things. And then you press a button and boom, it creates all of those things in a matter of seconds. Again, these are all things that we have to finesse because it's human AI and it's human, right? And then this last one is Get Munch. And Get Munch will take a video and it will search the internet or so social media to see what's trending related to this topic. And it will pull key threads or key video clips out of that video so that you can then use in your promotional copy to promote your courses. Pretty cool. And then lastly, we've got feedback surveys, completion data, assessment questions, and facilitator feedback. ChatGPT is a great tool for this. You may already know this, or you may be surprised to know this. You can take data out of a survey. So a lot of times with a survey, you can download it to a CSV file. You can grab all that data and then plug it into ChatGPT and ask ChatGPT to summarize the key themes. And in a matter of seconds, all of that data information has been categorized and summarized. You can really synthesize information really, really quick. So I know that was a really heavy load of how you can use AI in instructional design. So I hope you all found this valuable. This is all stuff that I am learning. I'm not an expert. I love learning new things. I think it's one of the characteristics of a good instructional designer is that we have a lifelong love of learning. <laughs> things always change. And so just plugging in and understanding it and learning about it is really valuable for us in our career. So hopefully it was helpful. If you have any suggestions about other AI tools that we can talk about, be sure to share those. You can always tag me or send me a DM with any of your ideas. 
All right, my friends, thank you so much for joining us in this Accelerated ID series. I hope you found it helpful. Go out and try some of the tools, launch some of those uh, free trials, practice, see what you like. Yeah.